uh, for coming and uh, I just wanted to give a brief of uh, what is ahead of us. As you are aware, the National Assembly resumes its ordinary sittings from next week, uh, Tuesday, uh, on Valentine's Day. Is it? And uh, we have quite a lot ahead of us. We have just concluded our induction program for committees and all the members now are fully inducted as to how business is conducted both in plenary and in committees. We also had our post-election uh, seminar and a number of you attended in Mombasa, which again has uh, helped especially our new members to get to learn much more on how business is conducted in the house and what is expected of them. And we have priority business that lies ahead of us and that's what I wanted to brief you on. And uh, first on our legislative roadmap from the 14th of February when the house reopens next week is consideration of the budget policy statement for the year 2023. We shall also be considering the supplementary budget estimates which were already sent to the House last week by the National Treasury following their approval by Cabinet in their Cabinet sitting on Tuesday last week. Committees are already working on the supplementary estimates and we expect that within a week or two they should have finalized and be ready to table their reports before the Budget and Appropriations Committee, which you also expect they will soon after table their report in the House for its consideration and approval thereof. We also be considering the debt management strategy policy for the year 2023. We will also have a general debate. You remember sometime last year, His Excellency the President sent a memorandum to the Speaker on certain ideas or thoughts that he shared with the House on the establishment of the office of uh, leader of official opposition, the question of two-third gender parity, the entrenchment of NGCDF and GAF funds and the Senator's uh, oversight fund. And therefore, as we did with the NGCDF uh, proposal, NCDF proposal to be anchored in the Constitution, we'll have a similar general debate on that memorandum from His Excellency the President, basically just to get a feel of where members are and uh, their thoughts into the process before the House makes a decision on what ought to be done with that memorandum. Further to that, uh, there are many bills. You are aware that uh, we also did a first reading of the miscellaneous statutes law, which is already before committees of the House and shall be also be coming up for debate when we reopen, as soon as the committees are done with the committee work. Then we'll go to the se second reading and third reading. There are indications also from the executive that they have a number of bills that are prepared that will be ready for consideration in this session of uh, the first session of this year. As you are aware, this is also the session that the House will be considering the annual estimates and the finance bill for the year 2023-2024, which we expect the National Treasury to send to the House by the end of April this year. I think with that brief, the only other thing I would want to brief you is one on uh, the issue of taxation. Because I've seen and heard many people in rallies and some in funerals purport that there are taxes that have been imposed on the people of Kenya by the current administration. And as you are all aware and the nation is aware that imposition of taxes is usually done through the finance bill. And Kenyans are aware that the current administration and indeed the 13th parliament has not had an opportunity to consider any amendment to the finance bill of 2022 
that was done by the former regime, neither has any finance bill been processed by the 13th Assembly or indeed the William Ruto administration since taking office. And it is therefore preposterous that those who enacted the finance bill of 2022 and the years before, imposing what they are referred to as high taxes to Kenyans, are the ones now who are accusing others of imposing high taxes to Kenyans. Therefore, I want to confirm to you and to the country that there has been no tax, any tax-related bill processed neither by this administration, the William Ruto administration, nor the 13th parliament, which took office late last year. Therefore, those accusing the current government and indeed parliament of having imposed unfair and high taxes, I think they should relook at what they did when they were in office last year during the handshake regime because the taxes being levied on Kenyans in all fronts from excise duty, income tax, everything were things that were done in the last parliament under the last regime and you will all recall because I sat in that house and you remember my position during the finance bill on a number of the proposals and you remember the bravado and the chest thumping that accompanied the passage of the finance bill last year. Therefore, those who are accusing us of imposing high taxes should relook into their thinking and be honest to Kenyans that it is them that impose these taxes that they are talking about. Two, in line with the provisions of Article 210, I have a copy of my constitution here, if you allow me to read to you Article 210 of the Constitution, it says that on imposition of tax, that no tax or licensing fee may be imposed, waived, or varied except as provided by legislation. Two says that if legislation permits the waiver of any tax or licensing fee, a public record of each waiver, underline each waiver, shall be maintained together with the reason for the waiver. And each waiver and the reason for it shall be reported to the Auditor General. Three says that no law may exclude or authorize the exclusion of a state officer from payment of tax by reason of A, the office held by that state officer, or B, the nature of the work of the state officer. And pursuant to the provisions of that article for our constitution, Kenyans again are aware there are those who used their offices as public officers in this country to grant themselves and their families and their cronies tax waivers. I have today written to the cabinet secretary, Professor Njugu Nandungu, requesting for information on all tax reliefs, exemptions and waivers that were granted from January 2018 to date. And in my letter to the Cabinet Secretary of the National Treasury, I have requested him to respond to us in line with the provisions of this article in our constitution and give us information on all taxes that may have been waived, reliefs that may have been given, except, of course, to religious or faith-based organizations or institutions, educational institutions and charitable organizations. As I said, from January 2018 to date, under the following laws, the East African Community Customs Management Act, the Income Tax Act, Cap 470, the Stamp Duty Act, Cap 480, the VAT Act of 2013, the Excise Duty of 2015, Excise Duty Act, and the Miscellaneous Fees and Levies Act of 2016. I have asked the 
Cabinet Secretary to provide us with information relating to tax incentives also granted to farms or companies under contractual agreements entered into by the Government of Kenya for the implementation of various capital projects during the period referenced above. I think in line with these Kenyans also are aware that many people who are implementing capital projects, construction of roads and other capital projects, applied for tax incentives, some that have been variedly abused by the contractors, especially foreign contractors, in collusion with certain government officers. In my letter, I've also asked for information that will give us the list of all the individuals, companies, as I said, farms or institutions that were granted the tax reliefs, exemptions or waivers, in line again with the provisions of the Constitution, the circumstances or grounds upon which such relief, exemption or waiver was granted, and the amount of tax that such persons, companies or institutions were obligated to pay had the relief, waiver or exemption not been granted. So that Kenyans can know who were the beneficiaries of any tax reliefs, tax exemptions or tax waivers and to what quantum and how much would they have paid had those waivers, reliefs or exemptions not been granted over that period that I have mentioned. Therefore, we have given the Cabinet Secretary a period of 14 days to furnish my office for further processing before the National Assembly because as you are aware the National Assembly is a house that carries the power of the past. An appropriate expenditure and also passes the legislation relating to taxation and even such waivers ought to have been reported to Parliament and as I said there also ought to be a record that is kept and furnished to the Auditor General. A casual look at what has been given to Parliament from the Auditor General's office indicates that it is not all waivers, exemptions and reliefs that were granted over this period were communicated to the Office of the Auditor General. And in line with our oversight role as the National Assembly and as Parliament, that is why we are seeking this information from the Cabinet Secretary and National Treasury. So that, as has been said, everybody in this country is obligated to pay taxes. And nobody, as the Constitution says, can use their public office to grant themselves tax waivers, either individually, to their families, their companies, or those who are related to them. Therefore, we want Kenyans to get this information and get to know who have been granting themselves tax waivers. And I think Kenyans, for the time being, already know a few. They also know a few capital projects that have abused the tax incentives granted to them by the government of Kenya. And I think with that, uh, that ends my brief, unless there is one or two burning endgame of my letter. My letter, as I said, is pursuant to the provisions of the Constitution and, of course, our mandate under Articles 94 to 96 in oversighting the national government and all its institutions. And therefore, we are simply exercising our mandate to ensure that taxes are paid by all Kenyans. And therefore, the end game is to end impunity and abuse of office so that if there are people who may have abused their office at a particular time, those who hold public office today may know that you cannot use your public office to abuse tax exemptions, tax waivers, or reliefs to benefit yourselves or your families or your companies related to you as individuals at the expense of the nation. Millions of other Kenyans have been paying their taxes, including you and me. Uh, on the Division of Revenue, I think, as you heard uh, last week, His Excellency the President will be convening a summit between himself, the Deputy President, and the Governors, the Council of Governors, to agree on the figures and uh, uh, from the National Assembly 
we will wait because the division of revenue bill again you know will will be coming to the house and i believe by the time the division of revenue bill comes to the house we expect that uh, the council of governors and the executive will have agreed on the figures sydney i don't know how you reject a law that has been assented to all odm members of parliament were in the house when the ibc amendment bill was passed by the house they sat in the senate when it was passed by the senate i do not remember or recall any member of the odm party objecting to the amendments that were passed either in the national assembly or in the in the senate neither were there these proposals that uh, whoever you are saying is making proposals for county based electoral commissions there were no such proposals and i think the law that was before the house and which was enacted and assented to by the president was a law that was passed by the last parliament the 12th parliament and again under the handshake regime and this is a hypocrisy uh, we must all call out and i would urge all of you to educate kenyans the law in question the law raila odinga purports to be rejecting he was the architect he was the author and almost the drafter him and president uhuru kenyatta they are the ones who enacted that law the only thing the current parliament has done is to amend a very small section of that law which was declared unconstitutional by the courts because the courts if you remember the courts declared it unconstitutional because they said the parliamentary service commission had uh, no standing to nominate four panelists to, to to the panel and therefore they said it was unfair and therefore unconstitutional and all we did was to clean up that unconstitutionality and we donated uh, one one position to the political parties liaison committee where all political parties including the parties in azimio are represented then one went to the public service commission that's the only tinkering we did with that law that was enacted under the handshake regime therefore if raila odinga wanted to reject that law he should have rejected it when they were drafting with uhuru kenyatta they were the pushers and movers of that bill if you go to the hansard myself and the leader of majority emeritus honorable aden duale are on record and i think the honorable murugara warning them that what they were doing was unconstitutional even the manner in which the parliamentary service commission was forced to take names that were only provided by jubilee and odm and actually a faction of jubilee because remember some of us then were still members of jubilee it was a faction of jubilee that was led by uhuru kenyatta and uh, amos kimunya that gave names therefore the uh, if uh, he's objecting to it maybe should call his handshake brother and ask him what mess they did uh, and again kenyans need not worry about it because the law the law is just to create a panel that will be able to interview the commissioners and we have made sure we were so magnanimous that not kenya kwanza not any particular party in uh, uh, in uh, kenya in the kenya kwanza coalition not even uda has an advantage over the other political parties even those within the azimio coalition and that's why the position that went to political parties went to the office of the register of political parties under the political parties liaison committee where all registered political parties sit and therefore have an opportunity to nominate uh, a panelist our religious groups the interreligious council has an opportunity to nominate two panelists just like the parliamentary service commission will have two if azimio wants to propose somebody they sit in the parliamentary service commission they are represented in the parliamentary service commission therefore what people tell people in rallies out there and the truth are two different things and that's why we must call out for their lies and their hypocrisy sydney kuja i am billy ingine mbili pale nyuma walter why would there be a person who against uru kenyatta Well, let me just begin with the supplementary budget question. As uh, I indicated, it's among the priority business that we have uh, when we open next week. 
the supplementary budget was uh, conveyed to the House last week, I think on Thursday or Friday, Thursday if I remember well, after the Cabinet sitting on Tuesday. And uh, it's been committed, as you are aware, our standing orders now allow us to commit uh, whatever comes when you're on recess uh, to committees, and we are now doing that so that committees begin work on it, uh, so that by the time we resume and start sitting, they will be finishing up with their reports uh, as they engage with the MDAs. Uh, hopefully, in another, within two weeks after we open, we should have completed the budget uh, an appropriations committee should have completed their report and table before the House. Uh, and I think that's a priority business for the House because there are many MDAs that are not able to transact business uh, pending the approval of that supplementary, those who had exhausted some of their budgets. And there are also realignments, uh, as I said, and I think some of you had misreported on the borrowing that this government has borrowed in the last few months, which, uh, and I think, uh, you also pretended to be correcting belatedly. <laughs> uh, but the truth is, the borrowing that was provided for as we did the budget last year, again, uh, with the protest from some of us when we passed the budget last year, uh, the, His Excellency the President did give a directive that uh, up to about 300 billion shillings be cut off from what was supposed to be, have been borrowed almost to the tune of 900 billion. And therefore, the borrowing will come down uh, as opposed to what was being done. Uh, you've also asked whether this, there is any proposal to introduce an inheritance tax. Maybe in somebody's imagination, there is no such proposal. As I clarified, the only way to make proposals to amend any tax is through the finance bill. And there is no finance bill that has come to the House. There is none that is coming in the, within the next two months. Therefore, I am not aware of any such proposals. And uh, if you are referring to the Estate Duty Act, I think, Haimba, you know it was abolished. But that is not to mean that those who have not been paying their land rates, it's among the things we would want to know from the Cabinet uh, uh, Secretary whether there are people who have also enjoyed a waiver and exemption of land rates and land rent from Athi House. Uh, and that's why I said uh, we have indeed uh, asked for this information from the Cabinet Secretary. And uh, as I told Obuya, uh, the end game is to end impunity and make sure that everybody becomes a taxpayer like the rest of us. Uh, as to whether it is targeting anybody, we have no reason to target anybody. But we have every reason to target anybody who may have abused their office, granted themselves waivers, and not to target them for anything else, but to target them and politely request them to pay up their taxes, taxes that are due. Once you pay up your taxes, nobody else is interested in you. Even you and myself, we pay our taxes. And you do it quietly. <laughs> you, you, you do your returns, you pay whatever is due, and you don't shout about it, unless, uh, Haimba, you shout about how much tax you paid. On the issue of... Why yeah, why not? Oh, 2018. Yes. Why not back why from not? the... Why not from 2016? No, from the... From 2013. In fact, you could start from 1963. Uh, <laughs> but you remember, this, when was this constitution enacted? When was this constitution? Uh, 2010. Therefore, therefore, if, if uh, you speak to your lawyers, they will tell you there are certain things that, uh, that after the enactment of this constitution, for instance, uh, and I'll give you the example of that law if it existed, uh, and, and after the passage of this constitution, things would have changed after the enactment of the constitution. Two, uh, we have a record already of tax waivers that had been sent between 2012 and I think 2017. And that is why we are asking for the record from 2018 to date. And to date means both under the handshake regime and under the William Ruto regime. Therefore, let nobody mis be mistaken that this is targeting anybody. Even if there is a waiver granted to anybody under this regime in the last few months that this government has been in office, 
we expect that information to be available to the House so that we establish that it has been done in line with the Constitution and the laws and Kenyans are not losing their taxes because we, we, we cannot have a country where some people are taxpayers, others are taxpayers who use their offices to avoid and evade paying taxes. Kuisha. Mike, uh, I think I, as I told Walter, unfortunately I'm not the accounting officer of the National Assembly, uh, but it's about austerity. The austerity measures uh, uh, cover every sector, including Parliament. And indeed, if we were to do things normally, and I don't speak for the accounting officer, this is just my own thinking, there has been a saving in terms of uh, if we were to do things the way they are ordinarily done. Because ordinarily there will have been an induction program uh, done for members of parliament, wherever, with cost attached to it. Members would come back probably for a while, then do the post-election seminar. If they go, for instance, to where they were, they would still take new flights, but now you are using one ticket. Therefore, there has been an element of saving, uh, and uh, as I said, the austerity measures cover everybody. That is why you see very many members of parliament around. Did you notice Mombasa was full throughout? I'm not getting your question. <laughs> Of why we are requesting for the information to date. Now, Buana uh, Odiambo, had we asked for this information between 2017 and 2022, you would have said you are targeting people. <laughs> now we are saying we are only exercising our mandate in line with the Constitution. Therefore, we should not be time bound to a specific time. It is a time we don't have information that we are requesting that information. Not out of fear that either uh, in the previous regime or this one there has been tax evasion. Uh, uh, but you and me know, you live in this country, Odiambo. For instance, when I talk about abuse of tax incentives in capital projects, I am sure if I challenge you, you could name one or two projects very near you where you are seated now. <laughs> <laughs> what is Expresso? We will see when we get the answers. Uh, and we will make them public by then. You are the chairman of the budget and appropriation. How much were you allocating? Oh, I can't remember the figure of it, to be honest. But it's not a small figure. And uh, I think the Parliamentary Service Commission has a duty and an obligation to ensure that the tower is completed so that all the members of parliament who are occupying offices outside parliament are able to be accommodated because it also becomes very inconveniencing for members to operate outside the precincts of parliament. Uh, therefore, ours is to push the Parliamentary Service Commission and I think is among the issues that were discussed during the induction program as among the members' welfare issues to ensure that the commission provides adequate office space within the precincts of parliament uh, for members of parliament. Sorry? Is the media center safe under your regime? Why? Because we are here. <laughs> no, 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 no. Huh? Uh, Polish media center. But now, honestly, Haimba, you know who called for that. <laughs> you know, Wasn't me. Wasn't me. You know, <laughs> I have used that media center for the last close to 12 years. And uh, I am a friend to people who sit in the media center. Therefore, if it was up to me, uh, I would donate my office. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's safe. I don't think. Why would anyone bother with you? Skill, I'm doing a fine job.